Are you excited for 2017? I kind of am. Hello everyone and welcome to Movie Reviews by Josh. My name is Josh Terry and today I'm going to be giving you a sneak preview of some of the movies for 2017 that I'm most looking forward to. Of course, I am doing this with a bit of an asterisk though because honestly, right now we know about a lot of the big franchises, a lot of the big movies that are already getting a lot of publicity, that already have big marketing campaigns. There's going to be a lot of other movies coming out this year that based on past experience are going to be on my list as well. So. For right now, let's focus on what we know is coming and what I think is gonna be the best of those. So starting off with number 10, we're going with the Wonder Woman movie. Now, I'm specifically picking the Wonder Woman movie and not Justice League. I am looking forward to Justice League. I actually did kind of enjoy Batman v Superman last year, though it wasn't on one of my top 10 lists or anything. But I worry that the flaws of Batman v Superman are going to carry over to Justice League namely Zack Snyder and the style and kind of the overly dark and unnecessarily dark tone. One of the things I really did love about Batman v Superman was Wonder Woman. I thought she was the best part of that movie, and so I am excited to see her in a movie all of her own. Coming in at number nine, I have the new Cloverfield movie, which I know almost nothing about except I think it actually has to do with some people in space that are still related to this alien invasion. Thing is, I don't really need to know a whole lot about it. I don't really want to know a whole lot about it because I kind of like to be surprised when I go to the movies. Um, but I really, really enjoyed uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane last year. I enjoyed the series in general. And so I'd be really excited to see what they come up with for this one. Coming in at number eight, I've got Thor Ragnarok. Not because I'm an unapologetic comic book movie fan. That's only part of it. In this case, it's actually more because I'm excited to see what the director does with it. The director, Taika Waititi, is the same guy who did Hunt for the Wilder People last year. He did What We Do in the Shadows. He's really, really funny, and I'm really, really interested to see what he does with the Thor movie. Because if we're being honest, I think that of all the Marvel movies we've seen over the last few years, the Thor standalone movies have honestly been a little bit more on the mediocre end. I like Chris Hemsworth quite a bit. I think Natalie Portman is fantastic. The movies themselves, just so-so. And so I'm excited to see what a director I really like is going to do with this franchise. Coming in at number seven, I've got the Lego Batman movie. And I don't really think I need to say anything about it because it's going to be the Lego Batman movie. I, I really loved the Lego movie a couple of years ago. I think a lot of people did. It almost seemed like an animation movie that was actually geared for adults, but just happened to be appealing to kids. And I get the feeling that Lego Batman is going to be the same way. Really excited to see this one. This is going to be fun. Now, the number six spot on my list is a little more speculative because this one is still feels like it's kind of in the rumor stages and it may not actually happen this year, but World War Z Part Two with Brad Pitt, I really enjoyed the first one. It had almost nothing to do with the book that, uh, in this case, I actually did read the book before seeing the movie, and they were very, very different things, but I really did enjoy World War Z. Specifically, I enjoyed how it showed the macro version of what was going on as the world collapsed under the weight of the zombie apocalypse, instead of just staying with a half dozen people in a mall. Hey, nothing wrong with, you know, Dawn of the Dead. Those things are fantastic. I love those zombie movies, but because I love those zombie movies, it was kind of refreshing to see the bigger picture in World War Z. And I hope that World War Z 2, assuming it happens and happens this year, I hope it can be the same way. Now, the fifth position on my list may actually be a little closer to the top in terms of the movies that I know for sure that I'm excited about this year. But Episode 8 from the Star Wars franchise, I think, is one that a lot of people are excited about. And excited even more so because the last two installments of the, the new Star Wars, the J.J. Abrams era, whatever you want to call it, have been very, very good. They've been really great quality. They've been really excited. They really restored the feeling, the vibe of the Star Wars universe that we all grew up with, at least all of us old people. Um, just for fun, uh, well, now we don't know a whole lot about the plot, uh, obviously, because... That's the way that they do these kind of movies and bless their hearts for doing so. That's I would not want it any other way. Um, but I have heard a rumor. It's, it's speculation, but I have heard a rumor that in this one we're going to find out that Ray is actually a clone that was developed from Luke Skywalker's severed hand. Just an idea. It's just out there. Comment. Episode 8. For position number four on my list, I have another sequel, which is no surprise because it's the 21st century and everything is sequels, right? Well, this one I think we can genuinely look forward to, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. 
This one, I always feel like I have to eat a little bit of crow whenever I talk about this movie and this franchise because I was skeptical going into the first Guardians of the Galaxy. I am not really a comic book guy. I know a lot of the characters, a lot of the main characters anyway. And so when it came to a new movie about a franchise and a group of characters that I'd never heard of, I started to wonder, well, maybe Marvel's kind of, you know, maybe they're stretching themselves a little thin here. Maybe they're kind of taking a step too far. Guardians wound up being one of my favorite movies that year. I'm really excited to see this next one. For my number three spot, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to leave it blank. And the reason is connected to what I was referring to before, which is that we don't know a whole lot about what is coming out this year. A lot of movies are not getting the same publicity. They don't have the marketing and ad budgets behind them. But inevitably, there's always one or two movies every single year that I see that is just a little under the radar indie. A lot of times they'll pop up at Sundance or different things like that. Uh, last year was Hunt for the Wilder People and Sing Street. A couple years before that, it was The Way Way Back. Um, I even really loved the Ben Stiller movie, uh, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty was one of my favorites. These kind of movies, they don't get a whole lot of publicity. We don't really see them coming and that's what makes them so fun is that they're completely unexpected. Sometimes I'll walk into the theater for the press screening and I won't know anything other than the name of the movie which is a wonderful, wonderful way to experience a lot of these. And so I'm leaving number three blank because I know there's going to be at least one movie this year that is going to be on my all-time, is going to be on my, at least my all-time list for the year, my, uh, my 2017 list. But I just don't know what it is yet, and I'm excited to find out what it is. Number two on my list is going to be the newest one from Christopher Nolan called Dunkirk. It's about World War II. We've seen some footage. Uh, it looks like it's going to be an IMAX, and it looks amazing. I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan. I think he does fantastic work. Really, really excited to see this one. Don't know if there's a whole lot more I really need to say about that. Which brings me to number one on my list, which is Chips. Remember Chips? No, you don't, because you're probably a millennial and too young to remember the TV show from the early 80s with Ponch and John, the California Highway Patrol, who used to drive their little Harley Davidson motorcycle police bikes in the same lane on the California highways. California Highway I Patrol and the little S. That's where the chips comes from. And there's going to be a chips movie this year. And it, you know, it's probably going to suck. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Michael Pena is in it. I really like him. Uh, Dax Shepard supposedly is coming out in March. I don't know. This is just kind of a toss up, but 1980s Josh is kind of excited to about the Chips movie. So in all seriousness, 2017 is shaping up to be a pretty eventful year. There's some coming out that are going to be really exciting. The ones we know about, like I said, there's also going to be some that we don't know about that I'm sure are going to be fun. Definitely going to be eventful next few months. Looking forward to making videos for the reviews. Looking forward to giving you something to watch and comment on and subscribe to, as always. Thanks again to Rockagator, our waterproof backpack sponsor. You can learn more about them by clicking the link below. So until next time, Thanks a lot, guys.